Let's find the quotient and the remainder when 3x cubed plus 4x squared plus x plus 7 is divided by x squared plus 1. So to do long division, you're probably going to want to get some space on your paper and list your quotient, or excuse me, list your numerator, the, the, the dividend, in descending order. So start with 3x cubed, the biggest power, then the next biggest power, then the next power, and then the last one. And then we're also going to divide this by x squared plus 1. Now, if you're wondering why is there such a huge gap right here, it's that when terms are missing, you might want to keep track of that here. And so, for example, this doesn't have an x term. Uh, so if you want to, you could actually insert a 0x, just to be very clear that there's a term that's missing here. Um, I'm just going to leave it blank, uh, kind of like a hockey player missing a couple teeth there. There's just going to be a gap uh, between the x squared and the plus 1 right there. So now what we want to do is we want to consider how many times does our the leading term of our divisor divide into the leading term of the dividend. So we think of 3x cubed divided by x squared, and that's going to give us a 3x. We're then going to record that 3x on the top of our, fraction, or our division bar right here. And since it's an x, I'm going to write it above the term that it corresponds to. So the 3x will go above the x. Then we're going to take our partial quotient 3x and times it by x squared plus 1. This is going to give us 3x cubed plus 3x, like so. And we're going to record this down below. So we get a 3x cubed and we get a 3x. Notice I left this gap right here the same way I had this gap right here. I want to line up like terms in the same column. So notice what's going to happen here. You're going to have a 3x cubed. They will cancel out. You should always have the leading terms cancel out if you chose the right uh, quotient up here. Then you're going to get a 4x squared that cancels out with nothing, right? Then you just have a 0x squared right there. So those just are going to cancel. I guess like, really, there's no cancellation there. You're going to get a 4x squared. And then the next thing here is you're going to get an x minus a 3x, which is a negative 2x. And then drop down the 7, you're going to get a plus 7. One of the most dangerous things you should watch out for when you do polynomial division is you have to remember that this negative sign distributes onto all the pieces. Now, the way that human eyes work is we really have this good uh, focus, this central vision, right? We can focus on one thing, and then our peripheral vision can notice something like the negative sign. We remember to subtract it. But the problem is when this thing gets long and our eyes start focusing on the 3x right there, our peripheral vision is not as good as our central vision, so the the negative sign in our peripheral vision might be kind of blurry. We might forget we're so supposed to subtract. So one thing you can do is you can just distribute the negative sign if you so choose. Uh, this is sort of a stylistic thing. We could have written this instead as, without the parentheses, we might have just put a negative right here and a negative right here to remember to subtract. That's perfectly acceptable. That's not the style that I form, uh, but you know, as you're learning, it might be necessary to do that so you don't forget to, to, to subtract the 3x right there. Well, polynomial division is kind of like shampooing your hair. You have to rinse and repeat. Uh, once you have the first step done, we do the next step. We have to then consider 4x squared, the new leading term, divided by x squared, the leading term of the divisor. This will give us a four. We're then going to record this on the top right here. We get a 4. Next, we're then going to take 4 times x squared plus 1. This will give us 4x squared plus 4. And then record that down here, 4x squared plus 4. And then we subtract that from above. I'm just kind of erasing my scratch work there. The 4x squareds will cancel out. Then you're going to get a negative 2x. And then you're going to get 7 minus 4, which is actually going to be a plus 3. And so this right here turns out to be our remainder. Uh, because notice a linear polynomial is too small to be divided by a quadratic polynomial. So our remainder is here a linear polynomial, negative 2x plus 3. And so we might record our answer in the following way. So we have our quotient, which is going to be 3x plus 4. We have our remainder, which is negative 2x plus 3. Uh, but I like to record the answer in the following way. So we started off with, of course, 3x cubed plus 4x squared plus x plus 7 over x squared plus 1. And then this, this improper fraction reduces to be 3x plus 4, our quotient. And then our remainder, negative 2x plus 3 over our divisor, x squared plus 1. So this would then give us the quotient in this situation. Let's take a look at another example. 
let's take the quotient. Let's find the quotient of x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus 2x minus 5 divided by x squared minus x plus 1. You'll notice with your dividend there, x to the fourth minus 3x cubed, there's no quadratic term. I'm going to leave a space open for that, 2x minus 5. If you prefer, you can actually write in a zero placeholder if that helps you. But again, I just like to leave it a gap right there. So I remember there's a quadratic term. And then you're going to have x squared minus x plus 1. And so let's do the division here. We're going to take x to the fourth divided by x squared. That's going to be an x squared. And then I'm going to record that in my x squared column. So it's a good thing I left a gap there. I needed it already. Then we're going to take we're then going to take x squared and we're going to times it by x squared minus x plus 1. And doing that is going to give me x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x squared. And then we subtract that from above. The x to the fourth will cancel out. We're going to get a three, negative 3x three cubed plus x cubed. That gives us a negative 2x cubed. And then we're going to get nothing minus x squared, which is going to be a negative x squared, which you can see right there. Then we're going to bring down the next term, which is going to be a 2x. We don't need to bring down all of the terms because as this is a trinomial, we only have to deal with three terms at a time. We then rinse and repeat this process. We ask ourselves, how many times does x squared divide into negative 2x cubed? We're just looking at the monomial there. Subtracting the powers of x, you're going to get a negative 2x, which we'll record over the x column. We're then going to take negative 2x and times it by our divisor, which is doing that term by term, we're going to get a negative 2x cubed. We're going to get a positive 2x squared, and then we're going to get a negative 2x. Subtract this from above. Uh, the first terms will cancel, so you get a 0x cubed. You're going to get negative x squared minus 2x squared. That's a negative 3x squared. And then you're going to get 2x plus 2x, which is a 4x, and then bring down the negative 5. We, re we re rinse and repeat. So this next stage, we want to consider what is negative 3x squared divided by x squared. That's, of course, going to be a negative 3. We now have our quotient. Our quotient will be x squared minus 2x minus 3. Uh, then we're going to take our divisor and times it by negative 3. That gives us negative 3x squared. That gives us positive 3x. And that gives us negative 3. Subtract this from above right here. We're going to see that the x squareds cancel out. We're going to get 4x minus 3x, which is an x. And we're going to get negative 5 plus 3, which is a negative 2. And therefore, x minus 2 is going to be the remainder here. So summarizing what we found out in this division right here, we found out that x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus 2x minus 5 all over, let me draw that bar again, all over x squared minus x plus 1. This was equal to our quotient, which was x squared minus 2x minus 3 plus the remainder of x minus 2 over our divisor, x squared minus x plus 1. I'm going to zoom out so you can see all of our scratch work on one slide right here. Pause the video right now if you need to look at it over for a few seconds, because otherwise we're moving on to the next example. So in this example, we're going to take, we're going to take the quartic polynomial 8x to the fourth plus x, 6x squared minus 3x plus 1. And we're going to divide it by 2x squared minus x plus 2. So let's first write down our dividend, the numerator, x, 8x to the fourth. There's no x cubed term, so I'm going to leave a space. We get 6x squared minus 3x plus 1. And we're going to divide this by 2x squared minus x plus 2. And so let's go through this process. 8x to the fourth divided by 2x squared. That's going to give us a 4x squared, which I record in the x squared column. Times everything in the, divis in the divisor by 4x squared, we're going to get 8x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 8x squared, and then subtract that from above. That x to the fourth will cancel. We're going to take no x cubes plus 4x cubed. So that's a 4x cubed right there. We're going to get a 6x squared minus 8x squared. That's a minus 2x squared. And then we're going to bring down the negative 3x so we can do the next step right here. Uh, next, we ask ourselves, how many times is 2x, 2x squared divided into 4x cubed? That is going to happen 2x times. 
4 divided by 2 is 2. x cubed divided by x squared is an x. We're then going to take our divisor and times it by 2x. This is going to give us 4x cubed. The leading term should be identical. Then we're going to get negative 2x squared. And then we're going to get a 4x right here. Subtract this from above. The 4x cubes cancel, but then the negative 2x squareds also cancel out. And then we get a 3x minus a 4x, which is a negative 7x, bring down the 1. So you'll see here that there was cancellation of the x cubes and with the x squares. That sometimes happens, and we just move on. That actually means we get to skip a step, which is great. But then we, we look at this, this term right here, negative 7x plus 1. That's too small. We have a linear polynomial divided by a quadratic polynomial. That means we're done. So our quotient was 4x squared plus 2x. Our remainder is going to be negative 7x plus 1. Let's write this as a mixed polynomial. So what we then see here is the following. 8x to the fourth plus 6x squared minus 3x plus 1 all over 2x squared minus x plus 2. This then can be written as improper fraction. It can be written as a mixed polynomial. 4x squared plus 2x, that's our quotient. And then we add to that our remainder term, negative 7x plus 1 over the divisor, 2x squared minus x plus 2. And like on the last one, I'm going to zoom out so that you can take a look at all of this at once. And this gives us some examples of polynomial division, so-called long division of polynomials. It's very similar to integer polynomials, and we just do it step by step by step. It's a recursive algorithm that every time you find a part of the quotient, then you subtract that multiple from the dividend until you eventually shrink down to get something too small, which is going to be the remainder uh, when you do this long division.